It's uh, 9.02. It's Tuesday, I think. First day of our uh, general sessions of our Kentucky GIS conference. Uh, looks like we've still got some folks rolling in, but we're going to go ahead and get started. We've got a pretty packed agenda this morning. So um, with that, um, I am Andrew McKinney. I'm the conference chair this year. So if anything goes wrong, you can yell at me and I'm okay with that. Um, uh, if not, um, you can blame the, uh, the rest of the conference committee because they worked their tails off uh, the last few months to get this thing going. So um, thank you all for, for joining. And uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to Tyler Huffman, the uh, president of CAMP. Good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the 2020 uh, Kentucky GIS Conference, our virtual edition. Uh, first things first, I want to give my thanks to Andrew and his team. Uh, they've gone above and beyond, just kind of like the name of our conference or our theme this year. Uh, they really uh, put something together. I think it's going to be pretty special. Uh, the first time to do it virtually, and they really uh, giving it their all. I hope everybody enjoys uh, the conference this year and, and takes something away uh, from a lot of our presentations. Uh, a lot of them look really great. I uh, hope uh, you can check out as many as you possibly can. And also be sure to uh, join us for some of the breaks uh, where you can connect with some of the colleagues you may not have seen in a while. I know a lot of us haven't seen each other, period. I haven't seen some of the folks in my office for a while. So it's a uh, nice to reconnect across uh, the state with our GIS uh, cohort. Uh, and also, uh, I know some more things will be said about the uh, social event this evening afternoon. Uh, so be sure to uh, try to put that into your schedule. It sounds like it's gonna be really, really fun. And all in all, I hope everybody enjoys the conference and uh, can maybe make some new GIS friends across the state. Uh, and with that, I will uh, kick it back to uh, Andrew. Uh, I think we've got a pretty neat uh, video for you. So Andrew, I'll let you have a control back. All right, thank you, Tyler. Appreciate that. So um, we do have a, a special um, conference opening and welcome uh, from Jack Dangerman, the founder and president of Esri. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and, and play that video for you. Uh, and just to make you aware, uh, Jack talks very loud, uh, so you might want to check your volume here and make sure that it doesn't blow you out of the water. Um, so let's go ahead and get that started. Here's Jack. Hi, my name is Jack Dangerman, and I want to thank Kurt and those responsible for inviting me to be able to speak with you for a couple minutes this morning. This is a special conference and for me, it's very exciting because it's nearly 40 years ago, the first time I came to Kentucky. I was a young man, young professional. We had started uh, ESRI about 12 years earlier and there was really interest and reception in this community. And I wanna say thank you. But this is, this is a very special meeting. It's the first time it's been done virtually, obviously. And it's a time for us to rebond, reconnect. The purpose is, of course, sharing and learning from each other and connecting with each other. This is the big idea of a user conference, that we can actually learn together and uh, grow together. So uh, Kurt asked if I would simply share a couple of perceptions about Kentucky. Um, my perception is you guys are amazing. I mean, I would travel all over the world. I work with GIS professionals like yourselves in different settings, but there's something special about Kentucky, actually, and actually more specifically special about the GIS users that are there. I mean, you are in every level of governments, small towns, big towns, regional governments, counties, the state itself. These are, these are great. And also in the utilities, from electricity, gas, in transportation, in water, in geology, in natural resources, uh, looking, looking at all the different dimensions of the state. And you are digitizing it. You're creating a digital Kentucky uh, ground up, so to speak, bringing all the geographic knowledge together. And this is really amazing, sharing it. I mean, you have pioneered so many things. 
And in fact, I was looking in my records, 27 special achievement in GIS awards since, since uh, the year 2000. This is not just good work, it's also good work that's been shown to others. I like to acknowledge good work, not simply because it makes people feel good, but because it shows the good footprints of what good work looks like. And uh, you should be proud about that, every one of you, actually, because you belong to this uh, incredible community. You know, the technology keeps evolving. Uh, at the time when I first came, we were barely running ARC Info on mini computers. A prime mini computer was set up in the state to manage lands unsuitable. And that was the beginning of something really great. But it was also the time for me to see how you were open to sharing. You shared everything from fish and game information to water information to transportation information. You brought it all together. And this was kind of like a big footprint. People like John Antonucci and um, many others came together to think through the whole idea of creating a digital twin of the state, and that was replicated in cities and, and counties and so on. Uh, but with that birthing of this knowledge came the idea that you could actually build a better Kentucky. And I think at this point, we've moved from mini computers to workstations to PCs to servers. Now it's going to cloud and web services. And this jump, this technological jump, is already being worked on by many of you, sharing your data as services and then linking it together through portals so that you can share and integrate dynamically, bring all of geographic information together. And this is so powerful. It's powerful not only to help individual agencies through data sharing, but it also opens people's eyes to this idea that geography, the science of our world, can be used as a framework to understand relationships and patterns. And you in Kentucky, every one of your universities teaches GIS, and you've got it going in schools. Young people, you are building a next generation of Kentuckyites uh, that will understand, understand how it's all interrelated. And so I want to acknowledge all of you. I um, mean, also, I've noticed you're standing up things like responding to the big issues like COVID right now. And this is a horrible thing, actually, that we're all living through. Uh, it's both horrible, but it also is offering us opportunities to do things differently. I mean, take Esri, for example. Our 5,000 employees here in the U.S. in a matter of weeks all started working from home, as many of you did as well. And being able to access the net, access uh, the content that's shared particularly, uh, has been a real blessing. We've moved ahead five years faster than we would have had we not had this uh, burden that we're living with today. And the aftermath of COVID is this huge tidal wave of problems with, with uh, our economy. It's gonna be very difficult to be resilient, as they say, and pick up where we were in the past. Uh, and it's gonna take you, GIS people, that can actually build the knowledge to show vulnerable populations, show vulnerable businesses, show issues about the digital divide, um, show issues about inequality or um, equity as it's, uh, as it's often described, being able to deal with the issues of race and the issues of, of cultural conflicts that are occurring in this polarized uh, world that we're living in today. Geography, the science of our world, brings this stuff together. And you can share how these relationships uh, work with your colleagues, with your citizens, with all of those in Kentucky who matter. And this, I think, my big vision is that this will drive us ahead with a more thoughtful and more meaningful future. It'll create more sustainability across our country and across your state. So I want to thank you and in the deepest part of my heart for the work that you do. Uh, I have some sense of what it took for you to get here. It wasn't sort of uh, leaving the parking lot early, it was leaving the parking lot late. It, it involved making investments, it involved having creativity to think through this problem solving that many of you have done. And mostly, 
today, we're here to also acknowledge the sense of community that Kentucky has. Wow, it's really great. I mean, I really wish I was with you because I know what it's like to be in Kentucky. You guys are so welcoming and uh, it's, it's about relationships and friendships. I know that and you've made me feel so welcome over the years and you make each other feel that way. It is through this kind of sense of community that so many things important happen. And with a virtual situation, it's harder to make new friends, but uh, we will. We're gonna struggle through this and make new friends in this particular meeting, but also celebrate our relationships of the past. And uh, so I wanna acknowledge all of you, the specialness that each of you has and brings to the GIS community there in Kentucky. And also just wish you well, wish you uh, a good meeting in the next couple of days and lots of learning, lots of sharing and lots of good joy. So thank you very much, Kurt and all of your colleagues, actually all of you, thank you for this opportunity. All right, thank you, Jack. That was amazing. Um, and uh, just a special shout out to, uh, to Kurt Bynum for getting that together. I think most of us know Kurt. Uh, he worked pretty diligently to, to see if we can get uh, Jack to, to create that for us. So that was pretty amazing. Um, it, is a, it is a difficult year. It, is, um, it was tough to do the virtual conference, but I think you know, we're gonna have a great show. Uh, Jack reiterated that a few times. So um, with that, um, I do want to move it over to thanking our sponsors because this, as we've said a million times before, uh, this can't happen without our sponsors, our vendor partners, and, and folks that um, put forth that, um, the, the help uh, to create something like this. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Scott Dickerson, who's our chair um, of our uh, vendor relationship team. Um, so with that, Scott, I'm going to pass it over to you. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Uh, good morning, virtual campers. I'm Scott Dickinson, member of our conference planning committee and chair of our sponsors committee. I want to say a few words of sincere thanks to all of our conference sponsors, sponsors of our keynote and general sessions, sponsors of our individual presentation sessions, and our two virtual so socials. Uh, you should be able to see some company logos from this year's sponsors scrolling on screen. Over the years, CAMP and our annual Kentucky GIS conference have enjoyed tremendous support and involvement from the private sector side of our Kentucky geospatial family. These great companies provide the tools, technologies, and talents to help us all work faster, smarter, and better. We simply could not host the rich annual conference program we've all come to expect without their support and participation. And this year's virtual conference is no exception. Again this year, during this very weird time of extreme social distancing and near total reliance on teleconferencing, these excellent geospatial businesses have stepped up to support CAMP and this conference. Our conference committee and CAMP as a whole extend a very big thank you to all of our terrific sponsors. We appreciate everything you do and we hope to confer, converse and otherwise hobnob with you all in person next year. And with that, I'd like to move on to this morning's session. This morning's opening session is sponsored by three great friends of camp and our Kentucky GIS conference, Esri, Eagle View, and Lim Imaging. Esri, well, what can you say about Esri? We all know them. They're unquestionably the global leader in GIS software support, and they have near unlimited resources that allow us to leverage the science of where. Most, if not all of us, use or have used Esri's vast suite of tools and services and know them really well. Kentucky has a long and storied relationship with Esri since the 1980s. Some of us even have three digit customer numbers. We'd like to shout out a very special thanks to Esri President Jack Dangerman for sharing his thoughts and insights about his Kentucky GIS experiences and observations this morning. Eagle View, provides a rich portfolio of high resolution aerial imagery, obliques, orthos, and cloud-based solutions, along with software for easy viewing. 
navigation and analysis to support a wide range of applications, including property assessment, change analysis, damage assessment, and emergency response with API integrations with other GIS software. Lynn Imaging has been a perennial camp and Kentucky GIS participant and supporter, and they provide a full suite of printing, copying, and scanning services, signage and graphics, printer sales, and supplies construction information management, and an array of digital solutions. Lynn Imaging is a recognized leader in printing and plotting, duplication and graphics technology, equipment, support, and service. And finally, I'd like to thank Stantec, another great longtime Camp and Kentucky GIS supporter for sponsoring our two virtual socials. Uh, last night's trivia night, and this evening's campfire social. Uh, in line with this year's conference theme of GIS on, above, and below the Earth's surface, Stantec provides surveying, mapping, and analysis to define land boundaries, physical features, and the built environment using GPS, GIS, 3D laser scanning, and aerial photogrammetry. Stantec delivers innovative solutions for challenging remote environments and complex urban settings. Um, I'd just like to thank again all of our terrific conference sponsors, and we hope to be able to see everyone in person next year. And uh, one last thing, uh, tonight's uh, uh, Tuesday evening social, you should find a link to that in your programs. I encourage everyone to attend. Uh, the trivia night last night was a lot of fun. And uh, with that, I will turn it back over to Andrew. All right. Thank you, Scott. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> and uh, I will reiterate what Scott said. Um, thank you all sponsors. We really couldn't have done this without you. Um, we, uh, we appreciate you every year. Um, wish we had you back in the grotto. Uh, maybe next year uh, we can do that again. Um, we'll go ahead and move on uh, to the next uh, part of our session. We are uh, running through it. Uh, we knew that we were going to go a little quicker than normal, uh, but that's okay. Uh, that'll give you all more time to hopefully find your room and, and get to networking, but we still have uh, plenty of stuff on the agenda this morning. Um, so with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Eric Muncy. Um, he is going to talk a little bit about the geo scavenger hunt. Take it away, Eric. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Uh, hope everybody's having a good morning so far. A lot of good content. Um, just real quickly, I am drinking from a OGI camp conference coffee mug that was given a long time ago. So I just want to say thank you for those. Uh, but uh, anyway, we are doing a geo scavenger hunt. A little different from previous years where we, you know, we're in person and doing actually a, a little trail uh, using actual GPS equipment. This year we decided to uh, we are doing this virtually to do a scavenger hunt uh, using uh, survey one, two, three. So basically um, what you'll do is you'll sign up. So you actually send uh, an email to myself or to Nick, my colleague. Um, and if you don't know my email address, um, it's eric, E-R-I-C at yourprecision.com. Uh, once once we have you in our system, we'll send you a link. You'll uh, click on the link, and it will take you to a survey one two three um, application. You'll fill it out. Um, basically, there's clues. There's about ten to eleven clues that you'll do, and you, what you'll do is take a picture of each of the clues. And um, for those that are ready. Uh, for the co uh, conference and that fill it out completely and have all the correct answers, you will be entered into a drawing. Uh, and we have wonderful prizes. We have some uh, Amazon gift cards and uh, as well as a swag bag of, of uh, precision products goodies. Uh, but, you know, regardless if you're doing this from your office or your home, uh, there's a bunch of clues that are that you'll be able to get pretty pretty simply. So thank you for the uh, conference committee for letting us host this event. Um, it's been successful. 
Um, I think as of today, we have a huge turnout. So, um, you know, if you, you know, also, uh, lastly, uh, we're going to run this until the end of this uh, week. So you still have a lot of time um, to get it in before 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Friday. You'll, you'll be able to uh, be uh, part of the drawing. So thank you. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Eric. Really appreciate you. We always appreciate Precision Products and their uh, geocache event every year. Um, they're always well attended. Um, really excited that you all are able to uh, put something together uh, to get people uh, out of their home offices or out of their offices and, and start doing some data collection in a fun way. So again, we always appreciate you. All right. Um, moving on to the next part. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this might get a little somber, um, but we, we do want to take some time uh, to recognize uh, one of our keynotes uh, that was supposed to speak this year at the conference. Um, I had a lot of good conversations with uh, Tom Logsdon uh, earlier this year. Uh, he was very excited to speak. Uh, the theme of our conference this year is above, below, and beyond. Um, the uh, above part was uh, was Tom Logston. Um, he was recently recognized as one of the 28 original inventors of GPS. He received his bachelor's degree in math and physics uh, at Eastern Kentucky University. Uh, he then went on to get a master's degree in point set topology and mathematics from the University of Kentucky. Um, in 1984, he was awarded an honorary PhD from EKU and uh, was the alumni of the year for EKU's 100th anniversary. And as author, author of over uh, 30 books, uh, space travel, computer programming, tapping into your creative potential. Uh, so Tom was gonna be that above part of our uh, conference. Um, you'll hear from more keynotes this week, Dr. Rickard Toomey, who's our below, and Omar Mayer, who is our beyond. Um, Dr. Rickard Toomey is the uh, Cave Resource Management specialist at the Mammoth Cave, and then Omar Mayer is the uh, Artificial Intelligence Director for Esri. And then of course, Tom Loxton being our above uh, was gonna be uh, speaking as well. Unfortunately, uh, Tom passed away earlier this year, and uh, we are going to watch a short video to recognize Tom. Uh, so thanks to his daughter for sending us to him, or sending this to us. Um, we'll take a look at this, and um, we will go from there. Thanks everybody. anxious to begin research on my 25th book, which is called Breaking Through. In that book, I explore the thought processes or winning strategies creative individuals use when they make major breakthroughs. And during that research, I've learned something quite intriguing. The people who make major breakthroughs have very different personalities. They have very different lifestyles. They work on problems that are very different. But the thought processes they use in making their major breakthroughs are hauntingly similar. And that is why all of us can learn how to be more creative. All we have to do is master and use the six winning strategies creative individuals use when they make major breakthroughs. I'd like to thank President Glasser, and I'd also like to thank my wife, Cindy, who has spent all these years putting up with an absent-minded professor. Caltech's famous engineering professor, Dr. Theodore von Karman, always kept a little sign on his desk highlighting the connection between stick to and success. Of all the known laws of aerodynamics, it read, the bumblebee can't possibly fly. The bumblebee doesn't know this, so he goes ahead and flies anyway. There are, of course, a number of ways to measure and define success. And I believe that you know for sure you are successful when everyone around you wishes they were you. And over the next 10 minutes or so, I would like to discuss with you, the graduates of 2007, the three major reasons 
All of the people surrounding you here today wish they were you. The first reason they wish they were you is that you have just gotten to attend an absolutely fabulous educational institution, Eastern Kentucky University. What a place to study and learn. A beautiful green campus, small classes, teachers who teach, the incomparable Ravine, a supportive administration, and townspeople who like and admire you. Over the years, I've been invited to lecture at about 25 different universities scattered around the globe. And let me tell you before I forget that Eastern Kentucky University is the warmest, most impressive university I have ever encountered. Maybe I'm a little prejudiced. For as you may know, a few years before the pterodactyls became extinct, I was a student at this marvelous green campus. Tom Logston. I got a phone call from an engineering manager named Dick Meston. He said, come over to my office, I have a new assignment for you. That was always the happiest day in my life, a new assignment. He said, we're trying to design a constellation of satellites such that you can see at least four all the time, and they have to be scattered across the sky all the time. So I went back to my office and I got out my big oversized quad pad sheets, four times as big as a sheet of paper. And I got out my colored marking pens and my colored pencils and started sketching it up. And within three days, I had covered 13 of these sheets with mathematics and geometrical sketches and drawings. And I had solved the problem from my viewpoint, verifying that this was the best constellation. We knew that we had to upload the satellites periodically on the ground. And it turns out if you put them in 12 hour orbits, every 24 hours, they'll be above, say, Yuma, Arizona, where we could upload them from American territory. So that pretty much defined what altitude they had to be. I, I've been saying for years that we would someday have more GPS receivers than we have people on Earth that they would actually be more common than light switches. So I leave it to you to figure out how many light switches there are in America. I've never had a number on that. So that's Tom Logson, uh, lived an amazing life. Again, he was gonna be one of our keynotes this year. Um, unfortunately, he did pass away, um, but I'm hoping that uh, that video did some justice to know what kind of guy he was. So uh, let's go ahead and um, move on. All right, uh, so next up we've got, uh, how does this thing work? So this is a, a big part of, of what we've been trying to, trying to figure out. How does this virtual conference work? We've all been in a lot of virtual meetings this year. Um, but what does it look like to try to mimic or mirror um, what we normally do at our physical conference? So uh, our team worked so hard to try to get to that point. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, do what I, I normally do uh, when I do a presentation, and that's a live demo of things. Uh, so you all get to watch me stumble and, and uh, fidget through uh, various files and folders, um, but we'll make it smooth. So I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about what to expect uh, the next couple of days. Um, try to give you some tips and tricks on how to make the most out of your conference, um, as well as kind of guide you along to uh, where you might be able to get some help uh, if you need to. We've done a lot of uh, virtual meetings this year, but there still may be some snafus that show up. So uh, just be aware of that, uh, be patient with us. We're definitely um, 
working really, really hard behind the scenes. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and start looking at um, how to navigate uh, the 2020 Kentucky GIS Virtual Conference. Um, and again, uh, where, where we'll go from here. So uh, first and foremost, um, I'm gonna go uh, into our website. At camppro.org. So if you hover over the Kentucky GIS conference, you're gonna find all the documents you should need in order to make your conference successful. Uh, the first one I'm gonna to touch on is the KYGIS attendee guide. You should have received this uh, via email um, if, if you registered for the conference, but if you need to go back and find it uh, as a refresher, uh, it is available under the Kentucky GIS conference link here. The one thing you'll need to know about this the guide is the hyperlinks do not work in this image, um, but the only hyperlinks that you'll have to worry about in this is the conference program ag agenda, which is available uh, elsewhere. So first things first, if you haven't done this already, I would go ahead and download the Zoom a meeting client. Uh, you can use the web client, but the experience is gonna be a bit more rich using that meeting client. Uh, there's also a mobile client. So if you have a tablet or a phone, a big enough phone, um, you may be able to get what you need from that mobile client. So to access the meeting room, everybody that's in the attendee uh, or the, as an attendee today in the webinar uh, found the link apparently, good job. Um, this is one of the things that we struggled with is how to get that out there. We tried our best. So um, if it was tough to find, we apologize. Um, it's one of those lessons learned. Um, but you'll access the Zoom meeting rooms for the sessions you want to attend by clicking the title link. And I'll show you that here in a moment. Uh, what we do ask is that you enter the room five minutes ahead of time, at least if you could. Um, uh, you can go in between the five minutes and the, when the session starts, but know that Zoom now requires either a password or a waiting room, and we have the waiting rooms enabled. Uh, if you enter in five minutes before the session starts, that gives the moderator uh, time and the host time to look at the waiting room and make sure that they allow you in. Um, that's a, a, a that would be a big help uh, if you could do that. Uh, we know we get busy. Uh, so just be aware that if you join a little late, uh, it may take the moderator or the host a second to see that you're in the waiting room and admit you. We've been practicing a lot, uh, but there are things that we're gonna be missing. So uh, for, I think for the best experience, try to get to your session five minutes ahead of time. Uh, that way uh, you can also see if you're in the right room. Uh, and if you're not, you can hop over to another room. But again, that does give time for the host to admit you into the waiting room. Uh, the next thing, please uh, use your first and last name. Uh, go ahead and change your name if it's not already uh, to your first and last name. Um, this will allow the host to, to look through the list, make sure you're registered, um, and allow you into the meeting room. Um, we haven't had any issues with that. We're not looking at, you know, really in depth at that right now. Uh, but just to make sure that you are uh, recognized, we'll go ahead and use your first and last name. Um, don't use any nicknames unless we know it very well. <laughs> That will help us uh, uh, get you into the room uh, pretty promptly. Uh, if you have any questions or problems, uh, please use the chat to communicate with the moderators. Um, in your sessions, you'll have a host and a moderator and presenters. Um, the moderators are gonna be the ones that are reviewing the chat to make sure that they can catalog those questions. They'll accumulate those questions and then they'll give those to the presenter at the end. Of course, if there's time, uh, because we still want this conference to be interactive if we can, uh, we don't mind uh, if there's time to go ahead and unmute yourself um, and ask a question that way. Uh, but to do that so people aren't talking over each other, uh, raise your hand um, using the, the Zoom function and the moderator will look and call you out and then you can unmute. Uh, that way we don't have a bunch of people talking over each other, especially with some of the sessions that may have a lot of people in there. Uh, so raise your hand and uh, if there's some time, they'll go ahead and allow you to talk and we can have some interactivity that way. Uh, when the session is ended, uh, use the conference program grid to proceed, proceed to your next event. So once that session's done, hop back over to the grid, find your next session, um, and, and go, uh, go learn. And also be sure to stop by the camp hallway. This is our attempt uh, at allowing some time for networking. Um, and then it's also a great place to hopefully get any questions answered that you may have. Uh, we have folks that are going to be monitoring that camp hallway room throughout the day. Um, I'll probably spend a decent amount of my time in there as well. Um, when I'm not attending some of our amazing sessions. 
Um, but note this, uh, that because the package that we bought for the Zoom is not room specific, it is meetings, uh, that we did have to break the camp hallway up into various meetings throughout the day. So where it says camp hallway is only open during breakout sessions, use the corresponding time and session link in the conference program grid. Uh, that means that if you try to use a camp hallway room from the day before, that room may no longer be open. Uh, so just make sure that you're within your corresponding time and use that camp hallway link uh, to make sure that you get into that room then. And then uh, should you have any issues, uh, please email uh, camphallway at gmail.com. We'll make every attempt to answer any questions you have. Um, a lot of folks are working really hard behind the scenes, so we may not get to your questions uh, as quickly as possible, um, but we definitely will try. Uh, so please be patient with us as we navigate these new very, very uh, shaky waters. All right, and um, so again, that is the attendee guide. Uh, we put this together um, in hopes that uh, it will kind of help you guide uh, the, uh, the, the waters of our virtual conference. Um, also, thanks to Vince DeNoto and his team at the Geotech Center. Um, we stole a lot of their documents from GeoEd, by the way, which if you haven't been to GeoEd, I definitely recommend it. Um, but they learned a lot for, from their conference. Uh, so we had uh, a few wonderful meetings with them to try to learn as much as we possibly could uh, and also use some of their documentation, modified it for our needs and went from there. So uh, again, thank you, Vince Noto and team uh, for helping camp conference committee <laughs> navigate these waters as well. All right, so let's move on to the agenda. So we... I don't think we sent out the Excel document. I think we just sent out this link uh, because this is going to be live as possible. So as we all know, and we've been into a lot of conferences, things can happen and things can change. So with that, be very aware that the session that you may want to go to may not be available anymore. Um, we are professionals. We do have family matters to attend to and life happens. So uh, this is going to be your best resource for the most up-to-date information for the conference. So GIS conference, conference agenda. Um, as we get more information, we're going to try to keep this as up-to-date as possible. Uh, so please be aware uh, that, uh, that going forward. So as you scroll through the agenda, you'll notice the, uh, the words in green. Um, those are the hyperlinks. So each one of those should correspond to uh, the room that you'll want to be in. For example, the 2020 KYGIS Conference Map Gallery. I'll be talking about that in a moment. That's scattered throughout this agenda because we're hoping that as you go through, you'll stop by the 2020 Kentucky GIS Conference Map Gallery. Uh, but I'll pull that up here in a minute. Today, you probably use this link here uh, to get into the webinar. Uh, and it's the same for the rest of the sessions. So the rooms are set up um, alphabetically, so room A, B, C, and D, and then each session is numbered. Now, whenever you're ready to go into a session, you click on that and you'll be put into a waiting room. The, that host will be starting that room uh, fairly early, um, but again, make sure that you get in there five minutes uh, before the session starts if possible. Um, it's not a huge deal if, you, if you're a little late, but again, it just may take a second for the moderator to notice that you're in the waiting room at that point. Whenever you're ready to go on to the next session, um, or if you're in a session and you find out, oh, I clicked the wrong link, you can just close that Zoom session and open up another one. You will not be able to have multiple Zoom sessions open at the same time, so please be aware of that. Uh, if you have multiple computers, you could, uh, and if you are able to do that and multitask that way, good for you. Um, that's uh, pretty impressive, uh, but it'd be a good way to learn as much as you possibly could. Uh, the virtual hallway is going to be open during the sessions. That is a place for you to go to network, uh, to chat. Um, we'll have people monitoring those. Uh, we do have the potential of creating breakout rooms in there. So if the virtual hallway gets pretty packed, um, you know, you can do the, the private chatting. Uh, you can chat to the, the, the group. Uh, but if it gets pretty packed, there's potential that we can set people up in breakout rooms and send them off uh, on their own. Um, of course, you know, we all have other ways of communicating, so you don't have to just communicate within Zoom. If you see somebody in there that you want to talk to, uh, you know, trade phone numbers and give them a call. There's that option as well. But we wanted to give you 
the opportunity to have a place to go to at least start um, the conversation and networking with our fellow mapping professionals. And like I said, it will be uh, attended by someone from the conference planning committee. Um, I will spend a bit of my time in there as well. So if you have any questions, um, definitely stop in and uh, we'll see if we can help you out with that. The uh, lunch session um, is at 12 to 1.30. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's a hyperlink. So whenever we're ready, um, you can click on that. And again, the uh, 2020 Kentucky GIS Conference Map Gallery is linked throughout this agenda. Uh, in between sessions, please stop by. Um, DJ and his team put together a really nice uh, hub site that shows off some of our great work that's been done within the state um, and possibly beyond. I think it's mostly within Kentucky. Um, there's some categories that we can vote on, so you can see those here. We have the best wall map analysis, best wall map cartography, and best story map. So, yeah, peruse the gallery of story map and wall map entries below and vote for your favorites in the following categories. If you scroll down to the bottom after you view them, uh, you can cast your ballot here at the bottom. So please do that. Take a look at some of the hard work that people have put out there. Uh, cast your ballot. Um, the folks will win a nice little prize. So uh, vote early, vote often. I think you can only vote once. I would do that. But again, that's... Uh, sprinkled throughout the agenda so make sure that you stop by the uh, Kentucky GIS conference map gallery and uh, again the the next day is the same thing it's broken out by general sessions um, it's broken out by the breakout sessions here um, you'll also notice that some of these sessions are sponsored um, this was a way for us to get our vendors uh, involved um, they're always a big part of our conference, um, so we really appreciate them taking the, uh, uh, making the effort to uh, sponsor some of our keynotes, our general sessions, as well as some of our breakout sessions as well. Um, so you'll notice that that um, is also in the grid. So be sure to, uh, if you talk to one of them, thank them for their, uh, for their help with putting this com uh, conference on. And then tonight, uh, this has been mentioned a few times, um, but we do have our Tuesday night social activity, the campfire stories. Um, the link is here. It's from 4.30 to 6. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to read a little blurb about the event uh, to hopefully entice you to, to make it out tonight. So join us by the campfire tonight on Null Island, where null values go to die, zero, zero, if you will, to hear ghoulish stories, famous movie ghost story clips, and take a virtual walk on a haunted trail. Uh, this is a night you will not want to miss, uh, or you may go missing. You will be surprised. So uh, please take some time and then uh, join us for a uh, Tuesday evening social activity. Uh, the Campfire Story should be a whole lot of fun. And, and as we said before, that's uh, sponsored by Stantec. So uh, that'll be a whole lot of fun. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to mention on the agenda is our wrap up session. So from uh, four to five o'clock, uh, we do have a general session wrap up and networking after hours. Uh, this is put together by our conference uh, committee. Um, Charles Altendorf uh, is sort of headlining this. He's a director of camp. Um, me as the president elect of camp this year and the conference chair will be in attendance as well as Tyler Huffman, the president. Um, and I'm going to see if I can convince other directors and other folks within the conference chair to join as well. So the point of this general session to wrap up is to talk about how the conference went, uh, what worked, what didn't work. This is an opportunity for you to share your voice. Um, you know, we don't have that way of us walking around and talking to us throughout the conference. Um, so we're gonna use this opportunity to, uh, to do that. So we could talk about um, the future of conferences, how the virtual thing worked, what we liked, what we didn't like, um, there's a, again, there's a whole lot of work that's done behind the scenes in order to make this happen. Um, and there are gonna be things that we missed, um, but we know that a lot of people out there have a lot of good ideas. Um, and uh, you never know, we may try to recruit you <laughs> because uh, as I've, I've heard, and I like to say more hands make less work. Uh, it, it takes an army to put some of these things together. So if uh, this is something that you're interested in uh, helping in the future, uh, that there's definitely opportunity in all the various committees. Um, so we'll be talking about that as well. 
And then if we have time, um, and <clears throat> if we'd like, we can actually talk about camp as an organization as well. Uh, the main wrap up and networking after hours is mostly going to be focused on um, the conference itself. But again, we've got some time and, uh, you know, if the conference was absolutely perfect and no one has anything to say about it, I'd be very surprised. We can move on and talk about camp as an organization um, and how you can help, how you can be part of it. Um, you know, what we do. Um, there may be some new folks that have not been part of camp before. Um, so there's some opportunity there to discuss that as well. Uh, so please join us for that uh, general session to wrap up, and that's Wednesday, uh, 4 to 5. So let's go on back up. Other items in here um, that we've got available to you are the abstracts. So in the past, we have a, um, a mobile application that allows you to link the two. Um, being that this is all virtual and everybody's going to be sitting in front of a computer every way, anyway, we didn't see it was necessary to to kind of create that package. Um, but we did obviously want to make the abstracts uh, easy to, to get to. Um, so you can get to them from going to the Kentucky GIS conference link and then clicking on abstracts. And all the abstracts are gonna be here for you. Um, one thing you could do if you don't know, you could always do a control F um, and you can type in a word and then find the abstract that way. Um, that's a quick way for me to figure out which one I wanna to go to is uh, grab that name of that session, do a control F on my screen, and then pull that up quickly and read a bit more about it. Um, you can also see who's gonna be presenting. Um, and with that, uh, we have a link for all the presenter bios as well. So same thing, we've got all of our bios listed alphabetically by last name. So you can click on that link, find a bit more about the person that is presenting the session that you're interested in. So that's available for you there as well. Um, so we reviewed the Kentucky GIS attendee guide. Uh, that's gonna be your guide to sort of help you navigate the waters of this conference this year. Um, the conference agenda, as well as the abstracts. Um, one more thing that I did wanna make a note of is that these conferences, uh, these sessions and presentations are going to be recorded. So uh, once the conference is over, we're going to be downloading those recordings, uh, maybe making some edits so we can get rid of the stuff that happens in the, you know, the beginning of the session, the stuff that happens at the end of the session, uh, try to clean it up a little bit. And hopefully we'll be able to post that um, fairly shortly after the conference. So um, just be aware that we do have a packed agenda. We have lots of sessions. Um, this happens every year. Um, but we're in a unique opportunity to be able to record them easier than we would be if we were at a physical conference. So we're going to take uh, that opportunity uh, to do that. So uh, be on the lookout for that uh, after the conference, so post-conference wrap-up um, questionnaire, um, any uh, lessons learned, <clears throat> as well as the recorded sessions, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that will be available as well. So let me check my list here. Campfire, camp hallway, map gallery, wrap up session. All right, feeling pretty good. So with that, let's go ahead and go back to our presentation here. Share my screen. So I just wanted to say uh, uh, thank you all for attending this morning. Um, <clears throat> again, this took a lot of work uh, to get set up. One thing we did notice, and, and if you were part of the quarterly meetings, uh, virtual conferences tend to go a lot faster uh, than physical conferences. There's a lot less having to move around. Uh, so we are ahead of schedule this morning. Um, we have our breakout sessions starting uh, at uh, 1045. So those rooms are going to start opening around um, five minutes before the session starts. Uh, so make sure that you get to that room uh, five minutes before the session starts uh, or somewhere in there. Again, if you're a little late, that's okay. Uh, just know that it might take some time for the moderator to get to you. So again, be patient. Um, I think as we go along, this might get a little easier and it might get a little smoother. Um, but, uh, you know, it's the first morning of the big, big uh, opening. So. Um, there will be some hiccups, so we definitely appreciate everyone's patience on that.
So with that, I'm going to pass it back over to our president, Tyler Huffman, uh, for some closing remarks. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, again, I want to extend my uh, gratitude and uh, to the planning committee. Uh, you guys have gone above and beyond. We're really going to see as we move throughout the next couple of days how much work they've put into it. Uh, all the little things that uh, may go uh, unnoticed at times. I think we'll all see the uh, how special uh, this has become for this virtual conference. Uh, secondly, I'd like to I saw uh, after the Tom Logson video, I saw a comment in the chat about how inspiring that was. I got to say that was, I was looking very forward to Tom uh, uh, being able to be one of our keynotes. His uh, commencement speech uh, that was part of that video uh, at EKU was actually my very first commencement as a faculty member here at Eastern 15 years ago. I was, uh, had attended that as a, as a brand new professor here. So, uh, to see that again is kind of, uh, again, inspiring and kind of reinvigorating, uh, to be honest, uh, to see uh, Mr. Logston. Uh, I know we're ahead of schedule, but I want to go ahead and, uh, I guess, let everyone go uh, on to your uh, uh, breakout or breakout sessions to the Find Your Room, maybe to the, the hallway. Uh, looking forward to chatting with many of you throughout the next day or two and seeing a lot of these presentations. I know I've got plenty marked on my list to, to go check out uh, over the next couple of days. So uh, without further ado, I'll turn it back over to Andrew if we need an official waving of the green flag, uh, perhaps, and enjoy the conference. And I'll see many of you at lunch and some of you again this afternoon at the social. Excellent. Thank you, Tyler. All right, everyone. Well, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, take a look at the agenda. Join the sessions. Uh, stop by the hallway. Again, the hallway is going to open up when sessions start as well. Um, the rest of the conference committee is going to be doing a lot of stuff in the background, making sure things are smooth. So um, hopefully will be, uh, that will be apparent as this starts to go. So sessions start uh, at uh, 1045. And then we have our Tuesday lunch and general session uh, starting at noon. And that's going to be another webinar. Um, so go forth, learn, have a great conference. Uh, really excited to get this thing going and um, we will talk to you all soon. Thanks everyone.